So really quickly, the last thing that we're going to be talking about is what happens with electrons. Because while we've been talking about electromagnetic radiation, what I haven't shared is the fact that electrons can move from one energy level to another. And in doing so, they can actually release energy. They can release electromagnetic radiation. And so one of the terms you're going to hear when we're talking about electrons moving is we're going to be talking about that energy being quantized. Now, quantized means that the energy that those electrons can either absorb or release when they move energy levels, it is a very specific amount, all right? And so the energy, when it is released, it is released in the form of particles, and those particles we call photons. So let's make sense of all of this. Let's use an analogy. Here you've got a bookshelf, okay? So n equals 1 represents an energy level where your electrons are, okay? And they're the closest to the nucleus. n equals 2 is the next level up, then n equals 3, then n equals 4, then n equals 5. Notice I can't put books in between n equals 1 and n equals 2. It has to be on that shelf with that specific energy. And the same thing applies for electrons. Electrons can be in the first energy level, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, but they can't be in between. And so when they move from n equals 1 to n equals 2, or from n equals 2 back down to n equals 1, there's a very specific amount of energy that's required to make that transition. It's not going to be an in-between energy. It's quantized. It is very specific amounts of energy to go from n equals 1 to n equals 2, from n equals 1 to n equals 3, et cetera, et cetera. All right? The other thing, notice that as you move out, those energy levels get closer and closer together, just for you to note. So moral of the story here, we've talked about electromagnetic radiation. Okay? When electrons move from higher energy levels down to lower energy levels, so for example, n equals 5 to n equals 3, they release a very specific amount of energy. That energy is quantized. Now that energy that's released, we call it photon. We call it a photon of energy, a very specific amount of energy that's released. Now how do we see this? Why do we care? Well, we care because it allows us to create what's called an atomic spectra. If you look at all of those different little lines that's on the black graph on the far right hand side for each of these, each of those colors represent specific amounts of energy. Each photon produces a specific wavelength and therefore a very specific color. So if we excite, for example, barium, the color you would see without dividing all of those colors up using a prism like they do in this diagram, you would see green. However, that green is made up of all of those individual, the blue, the green, the yellow, the orange, all of those specific colors that are produced when electrons release specific amounts of energy. Okay, so we've been talking about electromagnetic radiation and atomic spectra. This brings it all together. The fact that when electrons jump from high energy to low energy, they release specific amount of amounts of energy. That energy we can actually see because it is visible light. And so we see specific amounts of energy in the form of specific different colors if we were to take that flame, that barium flame or that strontium flame, and use a prism to divide up all of those colors to be able to see what's going into that one flame. So in the last video, you learned how to convert between wavelength and frequency. So in this lesson, you guys are going to learn how to convert between frequency and now the last concept that I had introduced before, which is energy. Okay. So how exactly do you calculate energy? Well, there's a formula that will be given to you, and that is E equals H times nu. Okay, so E is your energy, and the units for energy are going to be joules. H is Planck's constant, and that is going to stay the same always. That will always be given to you, and so the unit, that value is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. And then, of course, your frequency, whose units are seconds to the negative 1. And so that makes sense because if you multiply joules times seconds by seconds to the negative 1, or 1 over seconds, then the seconds cancel out and you're left with the units for energy, which are joules. So let's look at an example. Here it asks what the energy is of a photon from the violet portion of a rainbow if the frequency is 7.23 times 10 to the 14th seconds to the negative 1. And so I'm going to use my formula. Okay. I don't know my energy, 
I know Planck's constant. It's 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. And I know my frequency, which is 7.23 times 10 to the 14th seconds to the negative 1. And so when I multiply those out, what I get for the energy is 4.79, because I've rounded based on three significant figures, times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So that's it. You might find some slightly more challenging problems which give you wavelength and ask you to find energy. Clearly, you can't use the wavelength lambda in this formula, but what you can do is use your C equals lambda times nu formula to figure out what your frequency is and then plug your frequency in for your energy formula. And that's it.